First came the pandemic, then the cost of living crisis. And now we enter the great mortgage shock. In a world of unrelating change, as a nation, we now seem to exist in a state of semi-permanent emergency. In this video, I want to uncover what's actually going on and why I'm starting to believe that we're seeing an orchestrated attack on the financially vulnerable for the benefit of the elite. And most importantly, I'm gonna talk about what you can do to protect yourself financially with some very simple steps. Now, of course, in challenging times like this, we should be able to rest easy in the knowledge that our elected leadership are doing everything they can to protect us. Even if we're in this position in the first place because of a string of monumentally bad decisions and policies brought in by the very same people. But whilst the politicians are busy debating lockdown parties that happened several years ago, our billionaire prime minister is trying to steady the ship by telling us to hold our nerve in the face of catastrophe. That we've got to hold our nerve, stick to the plan, and we will get through this. Now, why didn't I think of that? Holding your nerve is obviously the best strategy to summon up hundreds of pounds extra every month just to pay for the essentials and to keep a roof over your head. As we're busy holding our nerve, what's being done to solve the problem? Well, it appears that Bank of England, after admitting they've made some pretty major mistakes, have adopted a Hunger Games style lottery system to find the sacrifice that's going to bail us out. And as they spun that wheel of fortune, it ended up landing on homeowners, small businesses, and as the effects trickle through the system, renters. These are often the people who are working the hardest to make ends meet, keep the country running, and are at a stage in their lives where they're the most financially vulnerable. And to add even more jeopardy to the situation, there's even a homeowner lottery going on, where the people that are feeling the most pain are doing so not because they've done something wrong or made bad financial decisions. The only thing they've done to deserve this hardship, which may well see people lose their homes, is to fix their mortgage at the wrong time. But of course, not everybody is in this situation. And if you find yourself at either end of the spectrum, you're going to be doing just fine. For example, as a pensioner with no mortgage, you're going to be benefiting from much higher interest rates on your cash savings, no mortgage to pay, and the triple lock system, which means your pension is going up in line with inflation. And at the other end of the spectrum, as doctors, nurses, and teachers are striking to get a pay rise that means their standard of living doesn't continue to drop, those who benefit from our state welfare system and live off benefits were awarded a 10.1% pay rise when universal credit was put up in line with inflation earlier this year. Look, I'm not hating on any particular demographic or saying this to trigger anybody, although I'm sure it will. My point is we're not playing on a level playing field right now. And even as many people ask for a pay rise that in real terms makes them poorer due to inflation, the government has gone ahead and introduced a stealth tax by freezing the income tax brackets and swiping a whole load more of our cash. And the big question is, will this financial policy even work in the first place? Look, it's widely acknowledged the sharp increase in inflation that we've seen over the last two years has been triggered by external factors. Things like the long tail effects of COVID and the war in Ukraine. It's not because everybody has been going out and spending all their money on consumables they don't need while swigging champagne from the bottle. Right now, affordability is already massively squeezed with the percentage of people's disposable incomes being taken up by mortgage and rental payments skyrocketing. Look, if inflation was triggered by an overheated economy and people going out on spending sprees, buying stuff they don't need, it would be easy to control by restricting the spending by raising interest rates. But look, in this case, people can't just stop paying for their homes. Moving takes a long time and is extremely expensive. Then when you add on the increased costs of transport, utilities, and essential foods, it's very difficult to see where people can cut back on because the majority of everything they earn is going on just existing. But that's okay, because look, Jeremy Hunt went and met with the banks and they came up with this genius plan to let people switch to interest-only mortgages for six months and he told the banks not to start repossessions for 12 months. But here's the problem, this is not actually solving the issue. All it's doing is delaying it and compounding it so people are gonna have more debt in the future. And talking about the banks, they now seem to be ramping up interest rates on mortgages pretty much every hour of every day, but somehow dragging the heels about putting up the interest rate on savings accounts. And funny old thing, making billions in extra profit. And they're not the only ones. The energy companies are also making billions in extra profits as they continue to charge us through the nose when the cost of wholesale gas is back to where it was before the pandemic. And look, even the water companies are bleeding themselves dry and going insolvent because the shareholders have taken out billions in dividends rather than reinvesting back into our infrastructure. And who owns these companies? Well, the biggest shareholders are generally the fund managers and investment firms that manage the wealth of our elite. Not to mention the odd politician or peer that might have a teeny tiny interest. Well, look, it certainly helps to hold your nerve when you have the ability to set policy which may potentially directly lead to improving your wealth. As a parent myself, I appreciated the package that was introduced in the last budget to help the childcare industry. 
only then to find out that the Prime Minister's wife part owns one. A fact which was apparently not deemed relevant to disclose on the public register of ministerial interest that was last updated in 22. Look, we are now in uncharted waters in the middle of a financial crisis. But rather than working out how to help the people who need it most, the government have in their wisdom worked out how to make the institutions more wealthy. And as always, it's one rule for us and another rule for them. So let's face it, there is no white knight who is going to come riding in here. Nobody is going to help you solve this problem. But I'm about to say something that I know is going to divide the people who are watching this video right now. And that is that everybody has a choice. One of my favorite quotes of all time is by Viktor Frankl, a survivor of the Holocaust. Everything can be taken from a man, but one thing, the last of the human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. So the solution is not to sit here and hold your nerve. The solution is to proactively choose your own way. Look, I know we're not technically in a recession, but more millionaires are made during recessions than the good times. And I'm not saying there is a one size fits all solution here, but there is a structure that I created called the wealth pyramid. And I've taught it to my clients for years now as a mechanism to give you the framework to build your own wealth, regardless of what your resources are. Now I've personally always broken this down into two halves, property and business. Now look, there's loads of other assets and opportunities out there. I personally like property and business, because it gives us one, the ability to be creative, and two, the ability to leverage a huge amount of resources. And there's three steps in the wealth pyramid. That's it. The first step is about building cash flow. And when you're getting started, you have to focus on cash flow. This is one of the big mistakes that people make. Equity or assets don't put food on the table and pay for your life. And in this amazing modern world that we live in, there are so many ways we can generate additional cash flow into our lives on our own terms without needing any real resources other than a bit of time. All you need is a laptop and an internet connection and you can start building income streams, whether it's as a side hustle or a full-time income. From online models to leveraging your expertise to taking control of other people's property with no money down. When you have the skill set and the mindset, anything is possible. And when you're pulling in the cash flow you need, you can start diverting this into building an income producing asset base. Now, perhaps you already have resources, cash, other investments, and you're not sure what to do with them. Well, I don't give out financial advice, but I put mine into something called cash flow multipliers. Now, this could be systems, teams, or even intellectual property on the business side, or you could put it into hyper profitable property investments that give you an exceptional return on capital. And what you'll find is, as your income stream from your assets starts to grow, you can start to reduce the amount of time that you need to put into trading strategies to generate that income. Now, I also recommend that you put a percentage of everything that comes in into what I call your oxygen tanks to make sure you have shock absorbers in place for times when you need it. And finally, we can ascend to level three of the pyramid, which is where we generate capital events to really start to compound our wealth. Now that could be buying and selling businesses or doing larger property developments. Now, whenever we have a capital event, of course we can skim off some for ourselves, but the majority should be reinvested back into your income producing assets to keep compounding your monthly income streams. Now, of course, whilst all this sounds simple, it's never easy. And all of this is underpinned by you your mindset, your skill set, and your ability to perform at a higher level. This is also about making the choices which are gonna support you and your family for the rest of your lives and grow a legacy that you can hand down to future generations. I know things are hard for many right now. I know there's a million excuses that you can run through your mind to convince yourself that you don't have the time or the skill set to do this. Look, you trusted me to get this far through the video. I want you to continue to trust me when I say that with the right toolkit, you can. Look, I'll put a link in the comments to a training video that shows you how you can build a property business that completely protects you from all the buffoonery that's going on right now. And if you want to see other case studies in action, then click here.